uh, before starting what's going on in China or what's going on in the uh, since uh, 1950, I made a small tour because uh, I think that uh, very a few of, of you uh, has seen the Ergani Plain or that district. So it's a uh, small, not very small, but a uh, uh, plain uh, surrounded by uh, mountains and surrounded by different geomor uh, geomorphological uh, uh, occasions. And uh, it's a very fertile land. And it was a, a place to see lake and then uh, filled it up later and um, preferred by the China people to be settled there. So uh, this, is, this photo is from the uh, south to north. The uh, highest, this, the, this high mountain is called Makamda or Zürkufta. It's a uh, holy mountain for the, uh, for the Christians and uh, Muslims as well. And uh, till the 1915, there was a very big Armenian monastery on top of it. Unfortunately, there are only uh, three pictures taken by the Getrut Bell. So uh, this is the uh, north east of it. And the, uh, this, this one is the famous, what we called Boaz. So this is the uh, main source of the river coming uh, to Chayonu. Now it's running in the south of, uh, of the side. And uh, now they have, uh, there's a dam there. It was built about uh, 10 years ago and uh, destroyed many things, of course. And this is uh, southeastern part. These are uh, all limestone crops. These limestone uh, crops uh, were everywhere. And uh, it's the basic, uh, uh, how do you say, it's the basic geomorphical formation in the uh, area. And this is the more uh, close shot from the Hilar rocks. And now uh, China. The river, which is uh, now flowing in the southern part of the uh, China plain, uh, was not uh, there at the Neolithic period. So uh, think of the China settlement without this river. So unfortunately, since this uh, rock formation dipping down uh, and continues under the old uh, plain area, when there, are, uh, there was too much water, uh, rain or uh, snow, there is always a flood and a torrent. And usually uh, this torrent and flood activities become the uh, normal uh, daily life of Chayone in all uh, in all phases. Just, I will uh, talk to you more about this. So uh, I want to show some, some a little bit, uh, what do you say, nostalgic pictures from the uh, previous excavations. This is from, uh, from the survey in 1963 in the Seert. And these are uh, 60, pardon, 64 Chayone. Unfortunately, uh, none of them are uh, in our life now. And uh, there are so many people who has joined and run and participate the uh, Chayone project. And uh, of course, from the Germany and from the uh, Holland and Williams uh, van Zeist, the uh, very famous paleontologist, as you know, and uh, all our uh, carbon-14 datings and all our botanical studies uh, has been run by him. And Vivian Morales and Isabella, 
I haven't seen her for a long time. And uh, 78 seasons, a lunch break, and some more uh, pictures from 18s. And it's a very uh, original design, uh, especially designed by the Braidwood to take more uh, good pictures and developed by uh, Werner Schnobel in the um, in 1964 or five, I think, by adding a kind of uh, hook to take photos. Now we have drones and we don't have to, to do this kind of uh, activities now. Uh, when we start to return back to and uh, to run more expeditions in, uh, Nine, no, 2014, the situation uh, in Chön, especially in the eastern part of the area is like this, because in 1990 uh, and 91, we have uh, uh, planned some parts of the site, which we have uh, already finished the excavation or mostly finished the uh, mostly finished the digging, uh, turned into an open air uh, museum by uh, making terraces and try to uh, display different uh, phases of the Chayone uh, for, the, for the visitors. So, and then before going to detail, I want to uh, see on the plan, I want to show on the plan that uh, Chayune, even known as the pre neolithic uh, A and B site, we have later periods, Potoneolithic, Chalcolithic, and uh, early Bronze Age. So, and uh, these later periods main, uh, mainly settled in the northern part and northeastern uh, part of uh, the site. And still we have some uh, problems that we have to solve. So uh, if you listed the basic games for, for the expedition, especially there are some uh, minor stratigraphical problems, uh, especially uh, for the PPNB and Potter-Neolithic transition, and which is uh, become very uh, important since 20 years. And uh, we have to keep an, uh, more attention on that, um, on that problem, since we have uh, Dark Sumakiyuk, and uh, there's also another site, uh, Salat Chami, uh, which is uh, contemporaries with the Sumakiyuk. And Sumakiyuk shows that the uh, developing of the early mineral, uh, early mineral tempered pottery, probably developed in the upper Tigris region. So another uh, important thing, the large building subface, because uh, in, in 1960, no, in 1967 and, uh, and uh, 68, we have exposed some parts of the uh, building room, uh, large room building some faces. But, but after being so settled and developed PPMB, uh, uh, PPMB settlement during the cell building phase, uh, phases and the early in the earlier phases, the uh, large room building subface, especially uh, the second half, display some uh, interesting features. The architectures uh, uh, were more flimsy and most of the activities stopped and there are some changes uh, in the, in the uh, chipstone industry, etc, etc. And uh, as we also understood from the Smokyuk that uh, during the periods that the maybe the at the end of the PPMB, 
and maybe the uh, early Potter Neolithic, the um, people are the people were more nomadic compared to uh, being sedentary. This was also seen in some sites in the uh, northern uh, Syria. So, and uh, Sumaki definitely show that at least two uh, phases of Sumaki are, uh, are uh, set up by, uh, were set up by the nomadic uh, people. So what's going on in Cheyenne, we have to uh, find more uh, clues, more data on that uh, era. And of course, PPNA. Because uh, the Sudamaria project uh, showed us that uh, PPNA in the upper Tigris, uh, top, uh, uh, Tigris basin uh, really displayed a really developed uh, culture. But in China, we don't know why. Maybe the uh, because of the uh, later buildings disturbances in the area in the same area where the PPA uh, people prefer to uh, organize their uh, living activities and as also uh, building their huts. Uh, most of the uh, most of the uh cultural layers has been totally disturbed this is one reason the second reason maybe the ppna periods uh, the people prefer to uh, state different part of china maybe uh, just in front of the hilar rocks and there's another question that uh, like uh, Güzir or Hasan Cave, Föyük or Kurtik, the uh, architectural, the, uh, the subterranean buildings were mainly uh, building, uh, built by uh, stone. But instead, China prefers woodland top architecture. So um, we try to understand why uh, there's a much big difference between this area because the Batman area or Kurtik is uh, the Arbaker Bismil uh, are not very far away from China. So what's the difference in the culture? And also uh, both Kurtik and uh, Hassan Cave, the, uh, the huts, contain many uh, burials under the floor levels. But we have very, very, very a few uh, burials uh, in PPNA levels. So these are uh, some questions on the stratigraphical problems and uh, also some details uh, of the, of the uh, subfaces. And the next thing is, uh, the site, the eastern and northeastern part of the site has never been uh, dug. So what's going on uh, on the uh, east of the east of the terrazzo floor and northeast of the site? What's going on? We have to uh, understand, and we also want to see uh, what was left in the Hilar Rocky area, which is just the on the south area. And uh, also for the early Bronze Age and earlier periods, because in 1968, a kist grave was uh, exposed. And uh, in the northern part, we have found some uh, interesting, uh, mainly uh, Mesopotamian origin but also Kura Araxes uh, cultures uh, pottery. So, and the uh, early Bronze Age should have played a very important role in the Argony play, since um, it's very close to the natural passage from uh, Mesopotamia, uh, from Mesopotamia following the Diyarbakir to uh, Argani Maden, copper uh, mine area, 
and to uh, Malati Elasi. And to, in Malati and Elasi, uh, think of the Aslan Tepe, for example, uh, think of the uh, excavations in the Keban Demeria or in the uh, Kaya Kaya, Karakaya uh, Dam rescue excavations. The early Bronze Age is very uh, dominant culture at those sites. So uh, being so near to the uh, copper mine and being so located uh, in a very strategic position, the Chinese uh, should have played an uh, important role also in the uh, early Bronze Age period. And uh, we have we thinking of uh, developing the open air museum because uh, okay we worked hard in 1991 and we have uh, many plans for 92 and for the uh, for the following seasons but since we have to stop and we have uh, to uh, leave the area in the after the 91 1991 season many things has not been finished and uh, it's the only open air uh, museum in the in that area. And since the uh, discovery of Göbekli Tepe, southeastern part of Turkey becomes so uh, famous and so attractive uh, for the for tourism. So uh, and the Diyarbakir should have been uh, act one of uh, active uh, important role in that activity in the uh, tourism activity and of course the geomorphological uh, studies in the Argani plain uh, was in a very minimum scale and uh, as we have understood from uh, from some data uh, in the chain that uh, during the neolithic period the, there was a uh, quite a big river with a uh, with a uh, high debris uh, in the middle of the in the middle of the plain. And what's happened that uh, the river has changed its bed? We want to understand this also. And of course, we have to research. Uh, there are so many researches in the archaeobotany field. And of course, in the archaeozoology, I'm sorry, I have forgotten to put it here. And uh, and renew and rearrange the excavation house, which was built uh, in between the 70s and 70s too by Nair Chakra, the uh, the husband of Ali Chambel. So. Uh, we start. We we have started all these aims. Uh, pardon. We started all the uh, all. Uh, we want to start this from the uh, small minor activities in different part of the site, especially in the area in the eastern part of the area where we called K area, but uh, start also the eastern of it. So this is our uh, open air museum area. And these are the new excavation uh, since 19, no, 20, uh, 2017. This area, as you see, is very close to the, uh, especially please give it, pay an attention that it's very close to the uh, terrazzo floor building. And the area here is PPMB. The one with the uh, green ones is early Bronze Age. So just the one step, you have changed the uh, centuries, even millenniums. It's, it's a very, uh, how do you say, it's a very uh, strange feeling that. So, um, what we have found here is a channel building uh, building subface, and what is important is a channel no, a grill building channel building subface transition subface. 
So uh, the grill build, uh, building buildings are very uh, typical for Chayonu. And it's a very uh, clever discovery uh, to stay in a, how do you say, um, to get rid of the um, wet uh, areas and have a uh, dry uh, and warm houses. So it's developed and uh, used for a very long time and started uh, in the late PPNA and uh, till the middle PPM, almost till the middle PPM. And it's each building surfaces, they really developed its planning. This is from uh, Martina Siken Axman's uh, PhD thesis. And uh, you may you see these, how these developing here. And I put some pictures from the older excavations that this is one of the oldest uh, grill plan. And this is the newest one, the upper uh, grill. So uh, you may also uh, follow its uh, ch <coughs> changing and uh, developing. So, but there's always a, a missing uh, area for this transition. We really de uh, do, uh, did not understand what's going on between. Even in 70, there, uh, there was a, par a part of, a, of some grill remains, but uh, since they had been destroyed uh, quite a lot, we, uh, it's not very clear what type of building it was. But in uh, uh, 2019, and still continue, continuing, we uh, see that the grill walls, these are grill walls, these uh, walls, it's not, exactly wall, but let's say wall, because we, could, we couldn't find a uh, good terminology for that. And the space between them uh, had been nicely uh, closed by capstones. So you have a kind of platform. And on that one, we have the typical uh, basements or uh, not basement, but platform of the channel building. This and that and that and that. So maybe here you may, uh, you may have seen uh, better. So these are the earlier building with this transition one. And this is the channel house building. And this is the grill. And this continues here. Next year, uh, we are going to open uh, its continuation. So uh, we are, uh, we think that we are going to understand uh, more about the uh, building plan. And here, there's a uh, cobbled paved building house remain. But what uh, is, let's say not interesting, but it always happens in China, there's a very serious uh, flood coming from the uh, North Northeast and destroying everything is uh, everything here. But from what we have seen here, that uh, from the grill building on, the area, the Eastern area, has also be, uh, been settled intensively. And uh, so the uh, site was uh, larger than we have thought. But seems to be, uh, according to data, what we have had, uh, what we have now, after this flooding, the, uh, the people uh, prefer to stay more uh, to the western part because uh, there is all, uh, no uh, reminiscent of uh, later subfaces of China here. 
And what another interesting uh, result from that trench that uh, area that the uh, the uh, channel building in the eastern no in the western part was also the part of the ateliers and that uh, in that area uh, the channeled building so doesn't uh, always being a uh, part of the ateliers as it's shown as it's uh, shown here according to the data what we have because um, even uh, uh, in uh, in in this area between the uh, uh, the excavation between the eighty six and eighty seven, when we are working here, we uh, kept all our day in the fields, just uh, documenting or labeling uh, small finds in the area, and uh, the uh, approximate number of the uh, finds of each day is nearly a hundred of uh, different uh, beads and bracelets and gontus, et cetera, et cetera. But comparing to that, the area that we are, uh, that we have found the uh, channel building in the, uh, in the trench that I've uh, shown you, we have almost nothing and also no, uh, no hint that there had been a uh, workshop or working area there. So even as uh, we as we have understood, uh, in the channel building subface, it start to be uh, arranged the site as being domestic ateliers and housing uh, and some uh, ritual activities area. So uh, even in the PPMB, there's a real uh, planning of the settlement. And the another important uh, find or interesting find that we have never expected, or I never expected let myself, is the uh, special building, another special building, which is very close to the terrazzo floor building, that one. Uh, why it is special? There are so, uh, not so, but there are uh, specific reasons to uh, say that. First of all, uh, they were, uh, it was specifically fulfilled with a very um, clean earth. And the, uh, the technique of the uh, walls, or wall constructions, are very much uh, similar to the other uh, special buildings, walls, constructions. And Uh, on the flooring, it's uh, not flooring, but on the top of the um, field earth, just in the corner, there is a um, small stone uh, group. These uh, very nicely green, except this one, specifically left there. And another thing, in the south uh, east part of it is a very small area, but there are some plaster fragments with some uh, red paintings on it. Or I, I cannot say that there's a, a drawing or anything, but it is clearly, as you have seen here, it's a, uh, clearly, uh, painted by uh, nice, nice or dark, not dark, but uh, very nice reds, I may say. Another thing is the building probably uh, 
damaged by these uh, torrents or floods, we don't know why. But in order to protect this building and probably the uh, terrazzo in order to erode it away, they, they had built another, uh, they had built a uh, wall, but um, on a different angle. And in that part of the uh, wall on its uh, northern face, there are two, two standing uh, stone fragments, a large slabs. As we know from the other, uh, other special building stand, uh, this type of very specific stones and standing stones has never uh, been used uh, in the domestic house. So we have a new special building, but uh, which is very close to the uh, terrazzo, probably uh, earlier than terrazzo, I don't know. Uh, to my opinion, it might have been um, uh, belong to the channeled or cobbled paved buildings because um, even each uh, subface has a very sp uh, sp uh, special building. The only special field uh, building of uh, channeled uh, building subface uh, is, for example, skull building. And except for the bench building, for the cobble building as well. So it might have been, uh, since they need a, uh, a, a building that they come together, I don't know, or, or uh, special uh, ritual activities, we don't know, of course, but they need a, uh, they need a place. We call uh, skull, uh, skull building only reserved for burial activities or uh, some may be ritual activities, but uh, on the on the deaths or uh, this burial uh, activities, there the the building itself is not uh, convenient for for any uh, or to, uh, become, uh, come together or any uh, meetings or anything. So and. Uh, we have returned back to Terrazzo. Uh, since 91, it was totally covered by, uh, by a, a very uh, refined sand and then on uh, earth because the, as you have seen, the flooring is full of cracks and it's very hard to, uh, uh, pr uh, to protect it. So we reopened this uh, this year and for, uh, next year or after uh, the next year, we start uh, doing some conservation and restoration activities. Since as you have seen uh, a detail from its flooring, it's really a unique for the PPMB period. So what, what we have done uh, next? As you know, the plaza is very uh, famous uh, open air hall, let's say, uh, in Cheyenne. And in the uh, earlier, it's, uh, earlier uh, phase, there are standing stones uh, in two rows. And then the, uh, in the second, uh, second renovation uh, activity, the stones have been uh, break, broken, and then uh, lay, laid down and totally covered with the uh, upper uh, feel. But um, even we know the eastern extension of, pardon me, uh, even the, we know the eastern extension of it, the, the western extension, we have no idea. We just imagine uh, or we guess, not imagine, but uh, guess, as we have uh, found some remains in the uh, in the trench 23M, which is in the middle of the uh, middle of the site. And 
be completed as it is like this. But um, even uh, from the uh, 87, 88, 89 uh, excavations, we have, or I have identified that uh, there was, and Mike, I also identified that there was a, or there were, let's say there were uh, many uh, touring tent floods. And even sometimes uh, the flood really threatened the, uh, not only the buildings in the, um, in the north of the plaza, but also uh, the plaza itself. So in 15 and 16 excavation, we, uh, we have exposed the, uh, some remains of these floods and uh, even one and a half meter south of the, uh, south of the area that we have defined in the previous years. So uh, in the uh, up to middle of the plaza, the flood uh, has been or has been very active and left uh, some sandy uh, layers behind. And uh, in 91, the um, the deep sounding in the north northwestern part of the area, we have uh, we have uh, determined many uh, many uh, layers that was left over by the uh, flood and torrents. So we are going to uh, deal with it together with the, uh, some soundings in the Argonne plane or maybe taking some carrots because so we, we have to understand what's really going on. And because of this uh, natural uh, activity, let's say, the site uh, after the early, after the cell building subways one, uh, becomes a little bit smaller or use the uh, empty areas more uh, routable. And in uh, uh, two, uh, 2015 excavations, we opened that trench. What was my, uh, my aim is uh, since in the uh, open air museum, we are always talking about plaza, but uh, there was no real plaza left on the site since they are all removed to uh, make an exposure here. But by uh, surprisingly, we have found a, a late cell building or uh, C, uh, C3B. So it is understood that in the, uh, the latest phase of the uh, uh, cell building subphase, the uh, plaza was really getting smaller and very uh, bordered by a building here. And there are also some small building remains here. And it was turned into a very small uh, plaza. And uh, another uh, excavation place or small operation around the plaza. In, uh, in the previous excavation, we haven't exposed uh, the eastern part of it. The part, I'm sorry, the western part of the DS building, which was exposed, uh, uh, which was the uh, westernmost exposed building at those years. So we have uh, finished the excavation here. And 
and find out that there was a, uh, another building, a cell building in the same line in the north of Plaza going to the uh, western part. But what's, what's surprisingly, we, uh, we have opened to, uh, only the uh, eastern wall of it. But as you have uh, seen here, it was uh, not in the, uh, in the order uh, position, the wall. Uh, this seems, uh, this, sh this shows that after the uh, cell building sub, uh, after the latest sub, uh, sub uh, phase of the uh, cell building sub phase, C3, uh, there was this real, very serious, not real, but very serious earthquake. And the southern part of the uh, building has been totally destroyed. But this was happened after the building has been left and uh, fired and totally uh, buried. So it might be it happened sometime in, uh, in the large room building subface. I don't know. Uh, we want to open this building in the later, uh, in the later seasons, and uh, try to keep the old burnings and all this collapse and uh, feeling uh, part intact, in order to uh, show the uh, visitors how. Uh, how was the uh, ant life of uh, of a cell building? So uh, we were we are going to plan to make a project and to work with the conservators and restorations, of course, because it's a very serious thing. And maybe we put into uh, glass frames, so we don't know. It's a later. And for the skull building. Now uh, we, we don't do many, many uh, things, but in between that, uh, I have, hmm, we have uh, made a small uh, sounding in the, in its courtyard part to check if there's a, a building remain uh, under it or not. And uh, as you have seen, it's a uh, natural virgin soil. So all the building activities uh, occurred in this part of the uh, area. And uh, what we have thought that the, uh, some walls might have been continued here or maybe here, uh, absolutely no. There is no archeological uh, feeling below this level. And, and in, uh, another thing is the uh, round building subface. In, in this area, which this was uh, 84 picture and this was not, uh, 2021. As, as I've told you uh, before that, we try to understand what's really going on in, uh, in the round building uh, subface, PPNA, in other words. And because comparing, we want to compare uh, if there are some minor or local uh, cultural uh, changes in the, even in the upper tiger space and in the same basin. So this is the only area that uh, we have, we, we could have exposed. And uh, here, we start digging, and uh, in eighty uh, no in ninety in nineteen ninety, uh, Mike Davis has ma made a small or very brief uh, digging here and exposed a roasting pit, a large roasting pit. This ro large roasting pit totally stayed on a uh, either a. Uh, a hut with uh, stone encircling, 
or uh, in a small uh, some round uh, think or we don't know <clears throat> or another rose think bit below we couldn't understand it but what what we have exposed here as you have seen this uh, calcified traces of uh, water and top architecture and this uh, there are two huts here one and another inside and this stone, whatever it is, uh, a hut or something else, we don't really, really do not understand this. And at the end of the season last year, there are two quite a large, one and another inside, uh, water and top architecture, unburned, but calcified. We get used to this uh, calcification process uh, while we were digging in Smaky. These are from Smaky excavations, not Chayonu. But uh, all the houses uh, contains uh, vegetal uh, outer uh, frame in the walls or some uh, uh, walls only made of uh, wood or reed or vegetal, vegetal, vegetable something. So, and with the uh, some uh, events, with the changes of the climatical changes, uh, it was turned as, uh, it was calcified and all the remains there are calcified as here. So we get used to, uh, see this uh, classification process in different areas. So uh, another thing is, it's really related with the early Bronze Age period, that uh, since the uh, Chön is the pioneer for the metallurgy uh, on the world of copper, uh, it is worth to be, uh, it's worth to be, to deal with the uh, copper, uh, age, let's say early Bronze Age. So uh, in four trenches, we exposed some uh, building remains and another interesting building remain. It seems to me a, a tripartite, a part of a tripartite building, but it might have been uh, not early Bronze Age, but uh, earlier because uh, uh, from the flimsy architecture here and other remains, the uh, early Bronze Age people, uh, at least in this part of the uh, China settlement, are nomads. So established in the summertime or wintertime, we don't know yet, of course. But at the same time, they used the area as a cemetery area. Here is, you see, uh, a cast grave. And similar one was exposed in uh, uh, 1986, about uh, 25 meters west of it. And another probably interesting, maybe there was a cemetery or a not cemetery, a burial below this one. But to, uh, to my op opinion, it was, um, it had been a well and then uh, filled and uh, used as a depot. So uh, this is the Kist grave. It's uh, consciously filled up, nicely made uh, uh, cut stones. And we don't know uh, the uh, sex of it, of of the burial, but at least this is a very typical uh, Mesopotamian uh, wares. Another thing is uh, to, it's not to establish, but renew our excavation house. 
which was built in uh, between the 70 and 72 by Nail Chokran and uh, try to uh, make a, a kind of display inside. This is Hale Sanum's room. We keep it intact and uh, try to uh, keep everything as it was uh, in the uh, Hale Chambers life food. And uh, there are many interesting and things which reflect the old, uh, old excavation system and uh, what type of materials used for a long time. This is, seems to be more than 100 years. And Oriental pay cards maybe, and we establish uh, cases, showcases and try to display uh, the, the artifacts that we have uh, that we have and most of them have not been used anymore. And we also keep our uh, food lockers. And as we have seen, uh, different type of displaying, try to uh, reflect the uh, life, uh, in China and many equipments and uh, most of them has been sold in antique shops now. And this is very important because uh, we are going to have some uh, electric, electric problems in the near future. So this was my valuable uh, staircase. And what I want to show here is this is the uh, this uh, how do you say notebook shows that China uh, excavation house is not the only excavation house, but uh, reflects the uh, history of the Near Eastern uh, archaeology. So. We are waiting for you. Okay, that's what I'm going to say and what we are doing since uh, 1950. Thank you very much for you. I don't understand what these green lines are. I think because of mouse. Uh... Mouse? Yes, if you use a mouse and pen. Probably. No, I don't have a mouse. I use my, uh, how do you say? Touchpad. Yes. Okay, probably it's touchpad. It's okay. Daniela? Aslı şeyi kapatabilir misin rica etsem? Share screen'i. Yeah. Stop, you can stop share. Okay. Okay. Stop Stop video. Yok yok, Stop share yok. Stop video var. Video share var. Pause share var. Ha tamam buldum. There we go. Wonderful. Okay. Ashley, thank you so much. Um, boy, I think you, you chose probably one of the most complicated ever Neolithic sites to work on. Um, so I, I wonder if there are any questions from the participants. Um, I see. Hmm. Well, what's in the chat I don't believe is directly related to the to your talk. So, oh, Avi has a question. So let's start with Avi, if you don't mind also turning on your camera. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Here we are. Good. Hi, Ashley. Hi, uh, Avi. We haven't seen you yeah. each other for a very long time. Yes. 20 years or five years or I don't know. It's true. It's been a long yeah. while. Yeah. Uh, you said at the beginning that uh, you are uh, after uh, archaeobotanical uh, uh, finds so that you can uh, 
work on uh, on that part. Did you uh, find any? Uh, yes, we have found some uh, remains from this uh, Waterland Daub area. We have a good remains. And uh, now Burhan uh, Ulash uh, last year st uh, has studied. And next year, uh, Eleni and some other peop uh, people from different universities also uh, join us and do some fine tool uh, analysis and maybe uh, do some uh, macromorphological, uh, pardon, macro archaeological uh, yeah. digging in some parts as well, even in the PPNA area. And I'm thinking of the uh, feel of this special building. So if there are, uh, if we uh, understand more of this uh, feeling technique, or I don't know, maybe we have found some remains. I really don't know. Another small question: uh, yeah. Are you? Are you? Do you have any new dates? No, uh, we have given a new project uh, this year uh, to Turtari uh, Kurumu and ask. Uh, no, they are going to give some money. And so at least half, uh, more than half of our uh, financial support, we are going to uh, ask to be talked about 20 uh, carbon-14 new dates. All right, we are next waiting. Year, next year, yes, next year we are uh, going to have more uh, new and more reliable days of China. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, okay, Trevor, would you like to ask a question? Yeah, I've got two small questions. Uh, 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 one is that uh, um, you have superb remains of, of the stone um, base layers of all the, the uh, houses, yeah? Um, but uh, there seems to be almost nothing of the superstructure uh, surviving, and it doesn't seem to be uh, deeply buried. Have been very substantial erosion of the site um, yes, during there's a, there's the period a of the and yes. yes, yes, yes. There's a serious erosion on the site, and up mm. to uh, sixty-four, this part of the site uh, has um, had been plowing in up to sixty-four, but erosion is very strong. That's why. Uh, I try uh, to keep the natural uh, vegetation as much as uh, we can to get rid of it. Uh, but we know the uh, from the other area from the uh, 1986 uh, ex uh, excavation that the upper structure of the uh, channel building uh, houses at least uh, 45, 50 centim high um, a wall with a carpet upper structure on it. Hmm. But here uh, it's below, uh, I don't remember, but it's 20 or 25 centimeters below the surface soil. That must make it very difficult to locate uh, intact occupation deposits. Uh, in some parts, yes. Hmm. Yeah. Um, the second question I have is, is uh, comes from the, uh, um, the, the, the picture you showed quite near the beginning, the superimposition of, of uh, two, three, four, five layers of, of uh, stone foundations, yeah? Grill buildings. Y yeah. Uh, why do you think people uh, rebuilt the foundations? I mean, they had su superb stone foundations, and yet when they replaced the building, they built new foundations, yeah? They presumably clear the site down to the old foundations, but then they build new foundations. Yes. Why not use the old foundations. They look good. I don't know. Maybe they have uh, I, from the uh, later levels that uh, the buildings uh, was uh, that after all. Yeah. But maybe the, this type, this type of leaf has been started during the grill uh, grill period, grill uh, building surface. I don't know. But what is interesting to me that they have uh, not exactly uh, 
superimposed on each other, but change uh, its direction a little bit. Yeah, that's right. Yes, they move a little. Yeah. 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 But uh, <laughs> maybe uh, each family has their parcel. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I'm. Uh, what I'm wondering, and I, I would wonder if you agree with me that uh, uh, it was perhaps important for them to retain their place. Yeah. It yeah, probably. it would be easier to if the old house needs to be replaced, build a new one 10 meters away, 20 meters away. But it seems to me that perhaps they, they are they want to keep their place. Yeah, this this is our place. And as you say, the old house is is buried below. Yeah, they, they are almost aware of the of the stratification of, of, of their history. Yeah? They've been, yeah, we are still here where my grandfather's house was. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Is that a possibility? Nice. Unfortunately, oh, I, I, my grandfather, uh, my father's house has been <laughs> destroyed many years ago. We don't know. We don't have it. Yeah, maybe that, or uh, maybe they have a really, it's uh, in quotation, a city planning that uh, each house. Uh, has been its own uh, parcel, its own uh, ground. Yeah, I don't know, it's, but it's really interesting for that. They have never changed. It's a very orderly. It was a very uh, orderly uh, planned occupation. Let's say mm. they really planned. Mm. Maybe I can, we cannot say, uh, I, but it's too early to say. For the water and top uh, surface, but uh, since grill, I can say this. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, we keep going. Uh, Gunesh, Gunesh, you had a question. Yes. First, of, first of all, comments. We, we travel. We also have the same situation in Akarchai, especially in the cell building. So my question, Aslı, do you have any new results on uh, on burials, uh, especially for ancient DNA? Uh, we now give a um, article, a and waiting for the. Uh, now we are waiting for it. Um, the the DNA. Uh, uh, mainly on the. Uh, cell building surface, not the earlier ones. But we have not enough burial from the uh, earlier subfaces as well. For example, uh, the only burials from the channels and cobbled or 90%, let's say 95% in the skull building. But in the skull, before the skull building, we try to uh, uh, study uh, study the burials outside the skull building because skull building is more complicated and uh, we decided to, to go over or especially Dilek and uh, Yilmaz decided to go over all the uh, uh, earlier remains uh, from 80 to 88 because there are some new methods to describe sex or find some uh, other things or because it's so uh, skull building deposits are so complicated they need to be revised as well so we have uh, decided that we have finished the uh, human remains outside skull building then uh, start skull so step by step Yeah, um, okay, there, there is a question in the chat, maybe two. Um, Daniela, uh, Daniela, I think this is your must uh, as a comment about it. Oh, yes. okay, so so Nurjan, I, I'm, I apologize, Sorry. I'll get back. Okay, Thank you. Nurjan, I'll get back to you in a minute. Let's go to your mas and then you. Okay, Thank please. Thank you. And I just want to give a brief information about the, the ancient DNA. And we have analyzed the 31 individual and maybe Ezgi can give more detailed information for, but I can 
uh, say that 13 of them uh, work very well and we have uh, sent we have submitted the article and published in the bio, bio archive and you can easily reach and read the paper and i can just say that uh, maybe the, the the genetic makeup of these individual of uh, chayun individual mixed with the anatolian and uh, a little uh, um, zagros and uh, the the levantin uh, groups but uh, maybe um, as can give more detailed information if uh, somebody asks about that and i also want to add another uh, issue and we have also the sent some individual for carbon 14 dates uh, from the skeleton and uh, the ppn uh, give some information like uh, Maybe I can uh, give some dates uh, from uh, the PPNA, like 7,600 BC, 8,500 8, BC, something like this. And uh, you, you can easily think that it is in between these uh, men of the individuals. Thank you for your uh, uh, the information. Okay. Yes. Th thank you, Imaz. So uh, I see that Eva Maria put up on the chat uh, a link to that uh, archive um, material that you mentioned, the paleogenetic analysis. Yes. And so um, I will ask now uh, Nurjan to ask a question, and then we'll go to another question that's on the chat that I will read to you. Okay, go ahead, Nurjan. Okay. And nice to see you too. I haven't seen you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice to see you too. Uh, thank you, Asla. Um, so I was wondering, um, actually, it's a kind of linked uh, thing with the Travers question about the uh, continuation. And um, can we uh, can we follow uh, the uh, duration of the buildings um, over the fines? I mean, how, uh, you know, what, what, what were the duration of each buildings on top of each other, the <clears throat> sequential buildings. I mean, um, can we follow that by looking at their occupational debris if if they survived, but, um, and the fines, how uh, how can we date uh, the, the each sequence according to each other, let's say, on top of uh, each other? Are you asking on the grill building subface or the general building subface? Yeah. I think uh, we, uh, the only clear, the, the most clear, clear uh, subfaces are on the grills, but uh, there are some in the cell buildings as well, I think. Well, uh, in the K area, uh, most of the buildings, yeah, except for the cell, uh, burned cell buildings, of, uh, of course. There are very um, a few small finds, mm -hmm. and the um, the thickness of the um, the feel of a building is so minor because the um, the grill foundation uh, has been uh, one uh, on another on, the, on top of each other. So mm -hmm. the uh, layer between sometimes not more than one or two centimeters. Okay. So they really clear the area. So I mean, uh, even for the uh, good series in the uh, GH uh, grill, you know that uh, the whole uh, the building. I mean, from uh, six levels, I think the whole uh, thickness of it not more than fifteen centimeters. Of, of the six, I don't I don't remember the exact, but maybe if it's 16, let's say. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, my other question uh, was about the plaza. So how can we understand the earliest size uh, of the plaza? Is that any possible? Do we have any well, evidence? Well, early size, at least east, when, uh, east and west, we know that. Mm -hmm. Because uh, in, the, uh, in the east, 
it stops uh, near uh, near skull building uh, area at the terrazzo uh -huh. and in west it's in the middle of the uh, 23 m if you do you remember that chidam's uh, trench uh -huh. yeah so it stopped there and then i'll show the picture with its two small standing stones north are the buildings northern buildings uh -huh. in the north but in south uh, we don't know because it's uh, it was eroded away uh -huh. and, and it's getting it's, narrow uh, at, least, uh, at least we know the uh, northern border east and uh, west limits but south border we don't know it's impossible but it is getting smaller uh in but it was uh, getting smaller in the uh, c3 uh, level because uh, this building that we have exposed in uh, 2015 really showed that because uh, they have also uh, removed during the uh, building of that building they also removed the uh, the first uh, plaza level was up uh, down to uh, Pebbles Plaza. Okay. Can I have one more question? Yes. Well, it was about the figurines, actually, because I remember uh, it was a long time ago uh, between the uh, PPN and uh, PN period, the figurines were kind of disappearing or uh, decreasing very dramatically, as far as I remember. And um, is there any other, you know, symbolic type of uh, finds around there, around PN? Uh, PPNA, we don't have any, uh, we don't have any, as far as I remember, uh, any figurines. In the grills, no. Usually the figu figurines, we, uh, we have started to find, uh, <coughs> Uh, cobbled paved and then uh, cell building and then uh, increasing in the uh, large room or large room let's say cell uh, transition mm -hmm. for example uh, before the large room building subface almost no uh, animal figurine mm -hmm. and the burials are also disappearing kind of there's no uh, burial uh, human remains from the large room building someplace. Okay, I'm done. Thank there you. There was there was there was a cemetery somewhere, but we don't know. Maybe there is a cavity that uh, totally uh, sealed by the uh, erosion or uh, feel uh, in the hillar. I don't I don't know. Because the alluvial uh, deposition is uh, some uh, in some places uh, is very high in the uh, in the area where the in the south of the Chayone. they are going to uh, do an op uh, open a trench or maybe some more trenches there, but not next year. Maybe okay, thank years, you. three years. Okay, Esgi, would you like to ask your question or would you prefer me to read it? Yeah, I can ask. Uh, thank Go you. Ahead. Uh, uh, hi, uh, <laughs> uh, I was curious actually about uh, how uh, Chayuni people affected uh, later populations in Upper Mesopotamia, because uh, actually from ancient DNA results, at least we know that they affected, we have some indications, they affected the more Western populations like Chataluk or Barchan, but I'm curious about Upper Mesopotamia. How Chayun people affected those uh, Upper Mesopotamian later periods uh, in archeological point of view, I mean. You mean the later periods what? Which the later periods? After the PPNB, you after, mean? After the PPNB or PN even. even. Well, we don't know, but uh, as we have seen from the other sides or uh, from the other data that uh, after the uh, after the PPN uh, B period, or uh, let's say uh, during the early uh, postneolithic period, there are uh, more uh, moving activity. I mean, uh, between uh, different sides because there's a, a real uh, climate 
medical change and so people has to move and uh, people uh, seems to be more nomadic so uh, how far they are they are moving i don't know but uh, before the bo uh, borders established after the first world war uh, according to the uh, documents uh, from different uh, travelers or some uh, or some other researchers uh, some of the tribes um, they went from uh, Musul to one. So that's a long way. Yeah, long. Or Bingöl to uh, Haseki or something in the northern part of uh, Syria now. So after uh, they put limits between the nations, they have to change their uh, roles or they have to be some some of them uh, forced to be settled because this is a policy in uh, um, not only in Turkey but Iran as well and Iraq as well they don't like uh, too uh, too much uh, movements uh, in there so maybe uh, even from Sumaki I thought that people coming from Zagros to uh, Sumaki and then go to Bingöl or Nemrut or so. So they move, they come and go and because there are no borders and nobody asks a passport. So why not? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. <laughs> okay. So Hojat, uh, you had a question. Hojat, you just raised your hand by mistake? Oh, no. Uh, maybe Avi have has another question? No? Oh. No, I, okay. I, I didn't raise my hand again. Okay. Okay, hello everybody. Thank you for your nice uh, presentation on the very important site of Chayunu. Uh, if I'm not, not mistaken, the, the site has the longest sequence of Neolithic in the, in the region. So I, uh, could you please tell us a little bit about the possible uh, shift in occupation? I mean, diachronically through time from PPNA onward through PN at the site from one coordinate, for example, to another, or the site was entirely under occupation uh, through this very long uh, time. Thank you. Uh, according to the fields uh, data and from the carbon 14s in the former times, it is understood that um, at least in the later part of the large room building subface, uh, the Chayuni uh, people insist on uh, living uh, in the same place. Even uh, after uh, after the big torrents and uh, floods occasions, they had uh, they uh, they found a solution to overcome uh, these natural events by uh, by developing grill plan building and then channel build, uh, channel plan buildings, and. Uh, as far as I understood, didn't want to leave the area. I don't know why. Uh, for maybe, okay, it's a very fertile uh, land for hunting and for all different type of vegetation and uh, available to reach uh, many sources, except for obsidian and obsidian is coming from uh, Bingöl, probably some uh, in quotation, a nomadic type of people. But except for that, they have um, found uh, everything in a near side, in, in their nearby. And as we have uh, understood from the copper uh, smith, that they have uh, even go to Ergani Maden. Okay, by walking, I don't know, it takes maybe five hours or not. I haven't walked there. I, I went there, but not uh, walking. So, uh, and then uh, the bazaar, they have found basalt and uh, flintstone and everything. So that might be the one reason, or maybe they have some other uh, uh, ritual reasons or taboos, or I think we don't know. 
Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Sorry, uh, I, I was asking about the possible shift in the occupation through time. You know, from, for example, a, a corner, you know, you have, for example, the earliest level in, in a, a particular place, then develop, for example, to another places of the site, or no, one place was completely abandoned, and then another place you have the beginning of a new occupation or a new phase. I was asking about okay, this. Okay, you are you are uh, you are asking that uh, if the occupation has been shifting like the yeah. uh, Balkan sites. Yeah, shifting like the, the uh, like the Balkan sites. Uh, seems to be not, but some areas, um, for example, uh, the area that we are digging now seems to be not occupied uh, after the cobbled paved building subface. Uh, shifting a little bit more, uh, more western part. And uh, after the uh, uh, cell building, the first uh, phase of the cell, cell building uh, subface C1, the northern part of the site, we don't know how uh, how big the how big this area, but totally flooded and filled uh, by the alluvial level. So they extend the site more western. But um, let's say maybe the middle seems to be the middle part of the uh, area has been uh, occupied uh, from PPNA. To PPNC. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, anyone? Any other comments? Avi, Avi raised their hand. No, I think Avi, you no, just, no, no. Uh, you can, oh, oh, Eleni. It remains. Avi, you can hold your Eleni, please, go ahead. Hello again, everybody. Thank you, Ashley, for this beautiful presentation. It was certainly oh. educational for me. Uh, I, for the first time, I saw a lot of images of the site that I hadn't seen before. And I would, uh, first of all, like to say that I was also very much, very much impressed, other than the obvious things, the archaeology and the scale of work you guys have restarted at the site recently. I was very touched by the beginnings of an exhibit on the history of excavations mm. at the site. I think it is extremely important to preserve not just the, the textual records, if you want, of previous excavations and research findings and progress, but the actual material traces of fieldwork, the tools, the day-to-day uh, paperwork, uh, the things that give us an insight, especially the younger generations that never had the opportunity to work with the pioneers in this field uh, or to be acquainted with uh, the nitty gritty of their methods and the day to day procedures. It is extremely uh, useful and I am very much looking forward to see some of these things in, in person this uh, upcoming field season. Yeah. Um, it's, it's beautiful and they are artifacts to all intents and purposes, archeological artifacts, as much as the archeology span of the sites, you know, the tripods and the tools and the, 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 the utensils, everything. So uh, very much uh, admirable this initiative and I hope it develops into a full scale, you know, exhibit and museum available on site. Now, coming to the archeology, span I have a question in the back of my mind that doesn't have to do only with Tsoyunu, but obviously relates to the wider, let's say, Eastern, Southeast Anatolian uh, uh, sphere of early prehistory. You, with your experience and the fact that you have been excavating not just Tsoyunu, but Sumaki and other sites in the region, but also having dealt with the complexities of uh, burial and disturbance at sites such as Tsoyunu, what with um, 
the recurrent problems of flooding and so on. Do you think that there is epipaleolithic habitation in the Ergani Plain, in the Urfa region, or in the Upper Tigris Basin, predating 13,000 years ago? That is before the Younger Dryas, or what some people call the final or late epipaleolithic. Well, uh, <clears throat> first of all, the uh, as far as I know, the lower levels of Kurtic uh, defines as identified as epipaleolithic. Yeah, they date to the Younger Dryas. That yeah. is the terminal and, Pleistocene. Uh, I was thinking about slightly earlier climatic. Uh, I don't know. Uh, in the, around the Hilar, at least uh, there are uh, middle uh, Paleolithic, but I'm not good as uh, in Paleolithic. In, I mean, okay, I know I can. I I know the uh, very typical uh, typical object, but cannot say. But there are some um, Paleolithic in the Hilar, but for the Epipaleolithic, we don't know. Because um, the alluvial uh, field accumulation is uh, in some parts is uh, really high. Uh, when you come to China, you are going to see that even uh, for uh, some remains from the uh, early Byzantine period had been totally uh, filled up. So I cannot say if there's. But this year we are uh, starting a new survey, uh, not only in the Argani Plain, but up to Chermik Chungush, uh, more to the Chermik uh, Chungush, more to the uh, east, uh, east, northeastern part. So uh, the area where these uh, limestone outcrops or with uh, some cavities might 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 be uh, might uh, be some uh, epipaleolithic remains but i cannot mm -hmm. say but if i remember now I, uh, I always confuse uh, brusov as the sötarlis uh, or biris mezarlı one of them uh, was epipaleolithic but which one which oh, i always confuse this but uh, bruce how died before finishing uh, the identification. Then Brian personal uh, has started. Then uh, Brian, I don't know, has some problems and not coming to Turkey and forgets uh, everything <laughs> uh, related to uh, Turkey or uh, in the southeastern part of Turkey. So I don't know if there is any go uh, if any anybody uh, going to uh, work on this material or rework on this material. Yeah. Well, I don't know that. I I I think that the paper you with uh, the the paper you were talking about earlier the 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 ADNA paper on human remains yeah might hold some clues there. I had a quick look at the uh, uh, preprint as was posted, the link that was posted on the site, on the chat. And if I am correct, please cor correct me if I am wrong, the dates, the, the human remains reported in this paper date from the mid ninth millennium and later. I don't Correct. Know, but yes. So but and you already have evidence that there is movement during this period. Could of it, course. It, it, sort of interactions. Yeah. You talk about you know people moving around the Taurus Zagros yeah. arc, right? Could it be as a hypothesis that perhaps with all the provisos of uh, site destruction, deep burial, etc., that such movements were happening also much earlier? 
of course. During the Epipaleolithic period or even earlier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, uh, it must be. Uh, mm. It must so that be. might be another interesting hypothesis that I I'm basically not asking you a question. I'm just turning up yeah, a discussion okay, subject I here. Know, you know. Discussion. Put, uh, put something on the table. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I never found convincing the theory that the Neolithic in Turkey appears suddenly out of nowhere. You know, I mean, there is there must be a substratum, cultural substratum, but maybe this substratum is A, difficult to find archaeologically, and B, perhaps this tradition of mobility and population movement has much deeper roots than what yeah, uh, we have imagined. I, to my, uh, to my uh, opinion, that uh, the communication between the settled, sedentary uh, uh, sites uh, has been done by these uh, mobile people coming and going. I mean, maybe the, they have carried the obsidian from the Bingöl and Nemrut and there to the uh, middle uh, Mesopotamia and some other sites in the upper Tigris, etc., etc. And maybe they have exchanged and even um, the uh, some jewelry like the bees and things have been uh, sent, let's say, from Chönü to Telhalla, let's say. I just give an example. No, no, no there is nothing. That, or maybe the Halula people uh, sent something to Chönü, to Ankarçay, or to some, uh, something, on they return back to there. So they distribute something and change something. And what is interesting that in the larger building subface, the uh, domestic... Um, she, uh, the uh, sudden appearance of the dom uh, fully domesticated sheep and goats. Okay, they are, uh, according to um, Hitomi and the other uh, archaeologists, that there have been an attempt or a trial error on um, the domestication of sheep and goat in the previous uh, subfaces. But um, suddenly, at the end of the uh, cell building subface, or it, uh, the, um, the site, not full, but there are many uh, fully domesticated sheep and goats. Mm -hmm. So some people in the uh, mountains area or more high, uh, living in the more higher altitudes, uh, domesticated. And when there are some uh, crisis plus and other things, so they dropped to the three, four, five in different uh, settlements and going to the south. Yeah, so that's what um, I, I think uh, the smart yes, theory. Absolutely. I just uh, wanted to, to remind, uh, I mean, in, it is very easy to not find this piece of information in the paper we published uh, about two years ago on our re-excavation of another uh, Bruce Howe uh, site in northern Iraq, Palagaura, but we did oh, find Anatolian obsidian from eastern Anatolia yeah. at this site that dates between 19,600 and about 14,000 years ago. So definitely a Paleolithic and definitely people from the northwestern Zagros going into Anatolia from as early as this period, which also replicates results uh, that have been done with obsidian sourcing from the as yet undated with radiometric dates, uh, Zarzi excavations by Dorothy Garrod. So let's keep this in mind that there is at least evidence on that side of of, of the Ark, the Taurus, the Agros Ark, that people were going into Anatolia from as early as this period, you know, yeah, Eastern okay. Anatolia, I mean. Yeah, and of course. They're coming back with obsidian, so. 
home since there is no any borders. Exactly. <laughs> Nobody asking you a passport and asking you who are you, what's going on, and where are you from? What are you doing are here? Yeah. And that's why I'm. I wish that I really want to be in the new Neolithic period. Look at Europe now. I know madness, isn't it? Yani, not only madness, but I don't know. I I couldn't really find a word, not in English, but in Turkish as well. <laughs> to describe uh, what's going on uh, in uh, in Europe now, in Ukraine, and all the uh, all the politicians just I don't know, just talking, not not just talking, but mostly talking. Okay, before we before we run over to politics, um, let me just uh, pour in my my dime in there, uh, and just mention very quickly and briefly that there are some Mediterranean shells at Chayanu, not many actually. Altogether, the the number of Mediterranean shells for such a large site, there are a few dozens throughout the entire sequence. So it's not very much, but it is there. So the fact that people had connections with uh, much further away is, is obvious. Um, and I also just wanted to remind you that I believe that in the general, that side of Turkey is the site of Halanchemi, which is also somewhat earlier. Um, Yilmaz, did you have another question? I just wanted to add uh, some information for uh, with the DNA, uh study suggests that in fact there is no big population replacement in anatolia the southeast in anatolia in general and uh we know that there is uh, some movement between the people and also there are some the long distance uh signal uh in Kurtiktepe. We have also some uh, the seashell in uh, as a bit in Kurtiktepe. Uh, but uh, if we look at the the strontium and oxygen analysis done on these uh, human remains, at least more than one hundred, and we saw that there is very little movement and there is no uh, the big population replacement and they are uh, moving around but uh, they didn't move uh, uh, or they didn't immigrant uh, in somewhere i guess and uh, like, uh the ellen said and we have to look at the other part of the anatolia because our excavation mainly focused on the the dam reservoir area and but uh, i think if we analyze uh, if we make some the, the detailed survey, uh, maybe we can also uh, find some evidence. Uh, I am not talking about the evidence, I'm talking about the, the regional uh, relations. Thank you. Okay, I think, um, I think we're more or less done. Any other questions, any other comments? It's getting a bit late, and um, I think that it will. Oh, oh, Nurjan, one more. Okay, let's do it quick. Okay. I was going to ask uh, actually Yilmaz about uh, the the where where was these samples from? I mean, because the, you you mentioned about the date, uh, eight point five BC. And uh, from it, which uh, which layer in China? I couldn't, uh, I mean, I tried to read very quickly, but I, maybe you wrote okay, it already. Maybe I can just uh, the, give some information. And these are from the, like, uh, the different uh, type of the uh, the buildings, but I don't, I, I, I cannot say the name of the buildings, but uh, these dates are from cell buildings. Cell building uh, subpaces mainly. Uh, Hocam, but uh, 8.5 BC uh, is from Grill building. Yeah, yeah, th there is only one. one. Yeah, there is only one. It's from Grill building, uh, and the rest is uh, cell building. It uh, distributes between 8,000 and uh, 7,500 BC. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think 
it's time to wrap this up. Ashley, thank you again so much you. for, for a fascinating talk.